In a moment, we've got a one-to-one -one interview I'm doing with, with uh, Majid al Ghanim, who is the Managing Director of Tourism and Quality of Life in the Ministry of Investment and in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So just hang on for that. Right, now to a nation which actually is, well, certainly was in a, in a good place in terms of its investment and, and tourism building, if you like. It was going, undergoing a massive programme of development um, before um, COVID. And uh, I've witnessed it myself, actually, in, in al Ula and Jeddah a little bit. So I welcome uh, Majid um, al Ghanim, who's the Managing Director of Ministry of Investment in Saudi Arabia. Hello there, how are you? Very well, how are you, Rajan? Good Very well. Um, so, as I mentioned, you had a huge, you still have a huge 2030 um, vision. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to attract 100 million visitors uh, by 2030. So, two things. One, has the situation, the COVID situation changed any of that? And number two, why should investors be interested in your one when we've just heard there are plenty of opportunities all over the world, quite possibly now? Well, uh, let, me, let me start with, with, the, with the second question. Um, if you, you look at it, you look at it from two different ways, uh, whether it's from a destination perspective or from an investment opportunity perspective. Now, they're both interlinked. And of course, uh, as a destination, if you do not get to attract uh, and stimulate the demand uh, for, uh, for tourists to come, you won't have the right investment opportunities for investors to come and, and invest in, these, in this destination. So uh, as a destination, uh, we look at the offering that we have. We look at again, the, the, the supply and the demand side. So in terms of offering, you know, Saudi Arabia is, is, is known for the authenticity. We're known for, you know, the variety of the experiences. And of course, the exploration. We talk about authenticity, you know, currently, and uh, uh, it's been going on for, for, for a while now. You know, people, when they want to travel, they travel for you know, for purpose, uh, they're looking for this rich culture, they're looking for the history, they're looking for, uh, you know, the right experience to go and, and, and explore. At the end, uh, I'd say the tourism industry, and, and, and we've been hearing this a lot, is the storytelling industry. So when you go somewhere, you want to hear stories and you want to uh, be able to tell stories once, you, once you're back to your, uh, to your country or to your, uh, to your city. And this is what we're uh, offering in terms of offering. Uh, so that is one area that we are uh, very keen to um, show the world. And we know that this, uh, this part of, of uh, the offering in Saudi Arabia is, is something that people will enjoy and uh, our guests will, will like to uh, later on uh, offer to uh, uh, as, as stories. Um, experiences, yes, we, are, we, we do offer um, great topographies and very different topographies, uh, whether it's uh, the desert, which is something that we're very well known of. Uh, we have great coastlines uh, on the Red Sea. Um, and we've seen that in, in, in projects like uh, uh, the Red Sea project, uh, Amala project, and hopefully very soon uh, where you see uh, a lot others coming up on the, on the Red Sea. Um, these, are, you know, these are offerings that uh, not a lot of countries can say have in terms of the variety, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the science and experience, the uh, desert experience, the cultural uh, experiences, the adventure uh, where you can go down south and enjoy uh, the mountains. Um, I believe all of these, in, in addition, of course, to uh, the mean of exploration, people would always want to go and explore something new. We are a country that is largely unknown to, to you know, a lot of uh, parts of the world. And we are currently offering it. We have done so since September last year, offering it to, uh, uh, for people to come and explore and, and, and visit and see what are the, uh, the hidden gems of, of, of Saudi Arabia, which is something that we are very proud of. Um, again, uh, there are many reasons. If I if I continue going on, going on about the reasons why to, to yeah. visit Saudi Arabia, uh, it would be a lot. Then one last thing, uh, you know, the WTTC have uh, recently uh, uh, said that you know since the opening of, of uh, the visas in Saudi Arabia in September 2019, we are the world's fastest growing tourist destination. We're very proud of that, and we know that this will continue until we reach 
our ambitions in 2030. Um, I'm going to return to the question, though, of, of competition in a sense, because I spoke to somebody from Bahrain yesterday. They're looking, very, who are your neighbours? They're looking very much for inward investment. They're very much into investing in culture. Um, I spoke to somebody from Brazil, and Brazil is a co-sponsor here. They they are saying, listen, we've got great credit lines of credit. Um, you know, we, we, we want you to come in. There's no rules about you not, and we've got loads of space, just like you've got nature, blah, blah, blah. So you've got to, it's going to be tougher in a sense, isn't it, post-pandemic, to get these... Well, this investment it, it will be from an investment point of view yes you know fdi is always uh, a competitive market you know, the people will always want to and countries will always want to uh, attract uh, investors whether whether it's fdi or ddi that's that's uh, also is the same now you, you see a lot of uh, investors in many countries are you know going outwards trying to to invest out of their after out of their home, home countries but then again um, as an uh, when you look at the supply and demand we're always we're you know, our supply was always, uh, you know, in bar with, with the demand that we had. Now, with, you know, uh, opening up and uncapping this demand, we know that to meet this supply, we'll have to be investing in, uh, in the tourism side. And that's not only about, you know, hotels, experiences, uh, developing destinations and all of that. But also, it's the infrastructure that comes with it. So, we, we do believe that you know, we have the opportunities, we have... That and uh, in terms of if you look at the the, the IRRs, the returns on investment in, in some of the projects that are currently uh, being developed or have, have been developed uh, in the past year or so, uh, uh, looking at uh, local domestic demand, you know, because of the uh, the, the lockdown and COVID, we, we've seen uh, incredible returns on on some of these projects. Uh, so. Yes, it, it will continue being a competitive market. It will be continuing to uh, you know, try to uh, bring in as many as, as uh, investors as possible to the, to the country. Uh, but then we have what it takes to compete. And uh, you know, I was just listening to, uh, to Nick Mayer uh, uh, before the session, and he was talking about you know, government spend and talking about you know, all of the incentives that are, that are being given. Uh, we're there. Uh, we're offering the right incentives for for investors, but then we will we'll, we're looking at the opportunities that we offer as incentives as well, because not a lot of countries can provide these opportunities at this time, you know, at this level. Um, we we've seen that you know a lot of consultants and have said that the drop in the global tourism uh, spend went down to. $8 trillion, something like $8 trillion, and not seeing it coming back, as you were saying, until 2024. Uh, that is, that is you know, hurting the, the industry. We understand that is hurting, hurting, hurting the industry. But then, locally, I think we are doing well. It's good that we are, you know, just starting. So our baseline is, is lower than a lot of the other countries. Uh, we are committed, the government is committed, uh, you know, and we're here to, again, uh, explore the opportunities with the investors. We're here to support the investors, whatever, whatever it takes. Uh, we know that uh, uh, you know, in, uh, tourists would want to come in and enjoy something new. They want to come in and see value and purpose in the visits that they want to make. And again, the authenticity, the history, the culture of all of the destinations that we have. And one important thing is the local community. We are very much, uh, you know, supportive of, of the local community, and we're seeing it. Uh, they're they're uh, becoming, you know, more and more part of this picture that we are uh, all together, uh, you know, putting up for for the world. Okay, um, just lastly, because there are a number of projects, I've been reading a lot about the the Red Sea Development Company uh, and what they're up to. Um, you've got a full portfolio of, of options in a sense. You've got the, the the Red Sea Island resorts. You've got um, UNESCO heritage sites, uh, Medina, um, uh, and uh, Jeddah. I know as well that, that is that some stuff happening there. Which of those different bits, if you like, in this early stage is is garnering the most interest from the international community, from investors in the international community? Well, you know, the, the, the international investors are, are, you know, becoming more and more uh, creative when it comes to offerings and in, when it comes to the type of projects that they want to uh, invest in. Uh, 
Uh, that's from one side. Another side is that they, they, they understand the demand much more now and the change in demand, of course. The change has, uh, you know, the demand in the past years have changed a lot uh, in terms of the type of, of, of tourists that, that are and what they are looking for. So, um, the, again, the good thing about, about all of these offerings in Saudi Arabia, whether it is the Red Sea, the, uh, uh, all of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites and uh, the developments that are happening across the world, is that you know, we're looking at the whole value chain. We're not only looking at a certain area, the whole value chain and all of the gaps that are within the value chain and what can we do to fill these gaps alongside the, uh, uh, the private sector. Um, and that's one from one side. Another side is investors are looking for a long-term picture. It's not something that is, you know, uh, it's not a hit and run thing. Uh, we, we're not looking at making uh, a project here that we talk about for the next two, three years, and then it will go away or fade away or a destination that will be, you know, uh, neglected. And then we look for other destinations. We're looking to develop long-term destinations, something that is very niche, things that are, uh, you know, filling the gaps, not only locally, but then in the international tourism market as well. Okay, thank you. And just one last point, and you, you, it's green and sustainability, a core, key to everything you do, yeah? Yes or no? Of course, of course it is. Yeah. Of course it is. And that is the, the, the change that have happened in tourism in general, right? It's not only in Saudi Arabia. Coming in at this stage has given us the opportunity to you know, look at everything in you know, a sustainable way. Uh, you know, and that's not only in tourism. Trust me, if I tell you that the whole vision of Saudi Arabia is about is about sustainability, the the you know, uh, diversification of the uh, of the economy is uh, sustainability. Uh, yep. Engagement of the community is sustainability. Empowering the women is sustainability. Uh, you know, looking at life uh, under sea and life uh, overall is sustainability. Uh, turning developments into green developments is sustainability. So everything, that, and then. We we'll look at we look at the the national tourism strategy, and one of the main pillars in the national tourism strategy is sustainability. So yes, we're very proud of it. Uh, we're probably one of the few countries that do have that as a pillar in their national tourism strategy, and we're very proud proud of it. We know that you know everyone has has bought in, and everyone is buying in, and we know that you know, this is something that will continue for generations and generations to come. Absolutely. I think that's one thing that's possibly been accelerated even by, by the current situation, the whole notion of sustainability. I'm glad you mentioned the empowerment of women. All those things add to the perception and, and encourage people, I suppose. So, so sustainability in every aspect, thank you very much, is absolutely what uh, I think the whole world wants. Uh, Manju, thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank we, you, Rajan. We will hopefully see you again.